Hello and welcome to Planting the Geeks. You join us for an unboxing video of 140,000 Dark Imperium. There it is, finally, after a long time of waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, the box full of Death Guard goodness and Primaris Space Marines. Let's turn it over. It's relatively heavy. Uh, I think that's probably the main of the book that's in there. Let's do that. So there's the back of the box. Cool. There we go. Very nice. So let's get it unboxed. Get cellophane off. Oh. Oh. The box is actually a giant cover. Oh, there we go. Oh wow. That's pretty cool. Okay. And inside. Oh. Two loaves. Sorry. Oh, there is the book. There is the Primary Space Marines Codex and mm. the Death Guard Codex. Oh, there's the transfer sheet. With, uh, what have we got on there? Books, Marines, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Space Wings. Mm. We have the construction guide in there and we have the core rules in there as well. What else do we have shoved under here? Uh, bases, is it? Bases? This is interesting. It's interesting the pack. Yeah. There we go. A big bag of bases. Some of the bases. We've got some of the uh, buying stands that I love. I will stack them. We have a... That's pretty cool. Inch ruler. And some red sort of gem-ish dice. So, so those are all the add-on parts, and we have, I presume all the miniatures are in this section, which is actually sealed with a kiss from the Emperor for the Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have to unseal it. And if that's to say there's not, no one's tampered with it. Oh boy. Box of plastic. So what have we got here? Primaris sprue. Another Primaris sprue. That looks like the boss sprue for the Primaris. And some of the jump pack marines. Mm -hmm. And we have Death Guard. Uh, Death Guard Pox Walkers. <laughs> Some of them are quite cool actually. Yeah, I do like these rolls. Death Guard Pox Walkers. We have more of the Primaris Marines. Mm -hmm. Standard on there as well. And we have what is mainly the Fetter Bloat Fly thingy majig. And a couple of the Death Guard. And some packing foam for us to pop lights of first best kit. There we go, that is the contents as far as miniatures goes. So the instructions, and that was what was in the box, was it? Yeah, the, in the uh, pack. So the core rules, if you haven't seen them, there are eight small pages. That side. And that side, which we'll go into when we play the game. Rules for Primaris Marines, which are in here. Got some painting things in there as well. Oh, cool. That's quite interesting. We have the Death Guard, which are the same. And then we have obviously the instructions. Right, so where do you want to begin building? Um, we'll go with Death Guard. The Death yeah. Guard first. Yeah. Okay then, so that's 7 to 10 in the instruction manual. So let's zoom in 
I'll get the cutting board out and we'll uh, start the next up. Okay, so the first uh, Death Guard one I was looking at is the Poxwalkers. So we have part 17, which is this cool, weird bit there. And then we have part 18, which is the head. Those two bits go together. Uh, there's two of those. It looks like there's two of all the pox walkers. Mm. So I'll stick that together. It's actually that, and then it goes onto a base. Uh, we're going to blue tack them on because I'm going to use some scenic bases when I get them. Um, but for now, and for painting them, I'll paint them on the standard bases. Back in a second. So there he is. His ugly mug. Done. Cool. Moving on. We have part 19. Is all this. Part 20. It's the head. This guy almost looks like a plague bearer. So there's two of them as well, isn't there? Yes. There's a so I'll, again, I'll stick them together and put them on the base. So there is the next dude. Yep, looks awesome. <laughs> it does. Uh, it's really cool. <laughs> so next up we have 8. D8, should we say. You've got this funky looking spiky club. Then we have D9, which is the head again. So again, there's two of those, so I'll put them together. And actually, uh, since you've already done them, we've got D6. I'm just cutting out D7 for you. D7 is the this weird arm section that he's got there. Here we go. Have we got it? Yeah, right there, there. So I'll put both of these together, and then I'll be back when they're done. Okay, so there is Dude with Club. Very cool. And there is dude with hammer. So far these are really easy to put together. I mean incredibly easy. One little dollop of glue on everything. That's it. Apart from hitting the table. It's really good. Um, so next one is part four and also part five which is this top part. Then we have part 21 which is like the whole back of the body and part 22 which is the whole front of the body that's a pretty cool one, I like that one mm. I love the intricacies on that, have you seen the it's like the inside of a bolt gun or something oh wow it's been stripped away and she's used, used it as a club that's cool then we have part 24 is this very painful looking guy and part 23 which is his head and then the last one on this page, which is close still cutting off, is part 12. Which is most of the body, it's just the arms and the head appear to be part of the same part, which is part 13. There you go. There it is. And again, you can see all like, the insides of weapons and stuff that they've used to bolt it together. So I get those bits cleaned up, I'll stick all these together, and I'll be back to show you them all finished. Okay, so there is one of the dudes. And there is that guy. I love the, I love the other arm on that guy where he's got it to his lips. He's like, me? You look at me? Moi? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just something like that. And then, this one's probably one of my favourites. It probably looks a bit like the Plague Lord, but just mini. He's a mini Plague Lord. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Know which one you mean. Yeah. The most converted model ever. Yes, the one I've got like six of or something. And then there's this guy. I haven't bought a Plague Lord in a while. Maybe I should get another one. <laughs> right, so there's two more of the Pox Walkers left. Part 10 and 11. There is 10. This big club is 11. And we also have, probably could be one of my favourites, because I love the lab coat on this guy. And I saw, I saw him before. He's got a mallet as well. So he's actually three parts. He's the other one that's three parts. So he's part 14, which is that bit there, with a little tentacly arm. Then the mallet's part 15. I'm just getting that off now. And then the front of his coat and his head are all there one unit go. there. That's the mallet. It's very Harley Quinn. That's pretty cool, isn't that? That's 15. It's huge, actually. 
Uh, and then part 16 is, like I said, the, the coat tails and his head, which are all connected. Which Chloe's cutting off. Eventually. As we speak. Sorry. Here we go. There you go. There's this bit here. So that's the only one that's three parts. And three parts isn't even that bad either. So it'll be very easy to stick together. So I'll put the last two together, I'll have a look at them. Have a look at the unit and then uh, yeah. Okay, so there's the guy with the big club. Looking cool. And there's the dude with the mallet. Don't fall off your base. There we go. I think he's definitely one of my favourites. He's really characterful. Yeah. I think it's the lab coat that does yeah, it. Yeah, these, these are really cool. I'd like the lab coat and head to be separate because I'd like to put... I might get another box of these. Uh, at some point. He, he says. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to use... There's one with goggles on. Where was he? That guy. Because they're like lab goggles as well. So I'd like to put the lab goggles with the lab, lab coat kind of thing going. So do a bit of a conversion there. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, love them. Uh, they're really good models. Uh, especially for not being multi part kits, they're just like single piece models. I'd like to see a multi part version of them, but these are awesome. Yeah, they're yeah. really cool. I like them. So, what's next? Plague next Marines. Is Plague Marines. Right. Right, so the thing I will add is we were two bases short on the Pox Walkers. Um, not a big issue for us because we've got tons of bases lying around. Plus, I'm going to be buying some scenic ones anyway, so these are all just going to be spares. But obviously, if, if you're new to this and you haven't got enough bases, that's when it'll be an issue. Uh, so, if, you, if, you, if that's the case, just tell Games Workshop. But we are, we were two of the small 25mm bases short so far. I don't know if we're short anything else or extra anything else yet. But as I said, it's not a problem for us because we've got tons of the bases and I won't be using them anyway, I'll be using the scenic ones. Anyway, moving on to the Plague Marines, we have parts C19, C18 and C22, um, which make up the first of the Plague Marines. And, and I really like these Plague Marines as well, these are look really cool. So let's get the parts for this. Okay, so part C19 is this bit. One of the things I do like about this is the Mark III arm, but it's like extended Mark III. It's or de-extended in some places, should we say. Part 18, that just fits onto the back, like so. Then we have the part 22, which is the backpack. It's this massive sort of like, almost like heavy weapon backpack. I think I'll get it. And then we have this uh, cool sort of blade grenade, shrunken head type thing going on. <laughs> Finally, we have the arms, which is uh, C21, which has a blade grenade on. And we have the other arm, which is C20, which is the bolt gun. And what I've done, I've drilled a hole in the end of that as well. It's not pre-drilled. I've drilled that. So, there we go. So I'll just stick these parts together. My look is finished. So there is the first guy finished. And he is... I should say, obviously, as I'm holding him, he's obviously a bigger than a standard marine. He feels bigger. He's bulkier. He's taller. He looks awesome. I do approve. I do, I do like that. So next up, we have E1, which is part of the power fist. E2. It's a bit crazy with the knife then. I've cut that a little bit off the top. So I can either green stuff that back up, or I can just cut that off. Make it a lot more ragged. I might do that, actually. It's an excuse to go and buy another set. Uh, <laughs> so there we go. I would use a knife for taking this bit off the sprue if I were you. The parts where the fly connects, it's got a couple of bits on there, and they're really difficult to take off otherwise. But as you can see, this one's got like a more of a chaotic standard sort of backpack with the two bits coming off. I like the variation, I like the fact they're not all got the same. And then we have the knife, like a plague knife or whatever that is. So we'll stick this guy together. There he is. He looks pretty awesome. I'm assuming he's the champion because he's got a power fist. I don't know for sure yet. We'll find out. But he does look awesome. I do like the fly on the back. Almost like a 
normal space with a servo skull. <laughs> it's the way it is. Very cool. Next up, we have C2, which is that bit. C1, which is that bit. We have C3, C4, which I've also drilled a hole in the end of. Doesn't come pre drilled. C5, with a spunky backpack that looks almost corner. Yeah. But you get all these little sensors in the end, almost scared of it. So this is this guy made up of these parts. So we'll stick him together. So there he is. Very cool. The thing different about this was that the arm went over the spiky bit. So it was like a hole in the shoulder pad. Ah. Which that just fits over. But went together really easier than that. Well it went together really easier, don't mean other than that. So next guy, C12, again I've had to drill the hole in the end of the bolt gun. And this bolt gun's a lot smaller, this is more of a standard size bolt gun. The others have been various sizes. Almost like the metal itself mutated bigger. Um, but there's C12, C11, with the classic um, Mark III armour with a spike on the head, the Plague Marines. And then we have C13, is that one? Yes, yep. that's right. Which is the front part of the armour and the Plague Sword, or knife. And then we have the backpack, which is sort of like standard chaos, covered in bells. Standard chaos, standard skaven. <laughs> there it's you go. Kind of like a sign of unclean, isn't it? Unclean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's why they use it on skaven as well. There's a little bell on there, even. Lord oh, of the Bells. Lord of the Bells, right. that's what we've named him. <laughs> so we stick him together. <laughs> we'll back in a second. There is this guy. I do like this one. There's the one with sort of the way he's walking forward. He reminds me of a very classic plague green pose. I do like that one. Well, I haven't liked any of them. <laughs> Next up we have C16, so this is the guy with the plasma gun. And that is sort of a very classic looking bulgy plasma gun. Almost looks like one of the old orc ones. It, must, it does, it looks really cool. <laughs> Retro. And then we have part it's that, it's not uh, that part. D3. D3. With a massive knife on the bottom of that. And then the, the, the tri symbol of Skulls and Nurgle. We have D1, which is this massive body. He's even got a bit of a cloak on there. We have this C15. Yeah. There's a huge armoured plate. It's like a knight almost. We have D2, which is the arm. The spiky bit. And then we have the head, which is. Uh, C17. C17. With this really sort of nasty open mouth maw thing going on with a very Conan esque single horn. <laughs> the Dagoth, was it? Yeah, mm. I think so, yeah. Right, so I'll stick him together, should be pretty straightforward. And then we're back to the next guy. So there he is, Cyclops guy with the plasma gun. He looks really good again. What can I say? Mentions itself justice. Alright. Next up we have E6. Which is another bolt this time, a little uh, chain attachment on the front. We have E7, which is a really weird sort of horn arrangement in the, with the three circles on. We have D3, which is exactly the same backpack as previously. Yeah. Oh, is it? Isn't it? Yeah. It is, yeah. There's two of D them. D3, D2 and D1. Ah, so it's the same bit. Yeah. So is it the same body and everything? It is, yeah. Right, um, it's like E5. E5 is a different... Yeah, well chest. before you had C15, this one's E5. Oh, right, cool. Yeah, they're completely three, man. Right. Could you get two D sprues? It must be the way that it, the sprues are set out. Yeah. That's, that's good though, because they're the same model, but they're not the same model, so mm -hmm. done well though. So I'll stick them together, so that you can see, another cool model. I've drilled the bolt gun on that, again. But there's a lot of detail on these, they're very cool. So the last of the seven, we have C6, 
we have C7, a bit there, which is a bit of the backpack. We have C8, again he's drilling. Actually does it? It's got a kind of an indentation on that one. I'll still drill it anyway. Um, we have C9. And then we have C10. Let's so stick this guy together. There is the last of the seven plague marines. Looks pretty cool. He's got some sort of furnace on his back. Very cool. Right. Who's next? The Noxious Blightbringer. Oh. Right, let's get the parts off for him. Okay, so we have... E3, E8, sorry, instead of E3. Uh, games convention. <laughs> so we have E8, E9, which is up there. We have this convoluted part with the Nurgling on. That's E12. That attaches to E13, which is the part of this bell. Then we have the other arm where he's actually ringing a bell, which is uh, E10, that bit there, plus E11. So Pretty straightforward to put together. We'll stick them together. See what it looks like. So there is the noxious blight bringer. What do you think? Mm. Do you look good? He looks really good. Yeah. This looks awesome. <laughs> it does remind me of one of the plague kings. Though. I just think it's the massive bell. Yeah. And he's about the same size. That's a terminator base. He's actually on a forty mil base. He does look awesome. You'd think he'd get a headache though, having that bell above his head. Going off all the time. Maybe he is. Maybe. Maybe yeah. that's the key. So next up is the Malignant Plague Caster. So that consists of E16, E17, which was broke when it came off the sprue. Mm -hmm. So just be very careful when you're taking this part off. I've had to glue that bit back on. It was a clean break, so there shouldn't be any problems. It should get covered up with paint. But there we go. We have E19, E14, uh, E15, E20, and E18. So we'll stick this guy together. If there's any issues, I can't see any. They will just like this slot together like everything else. I'll be back otherwise. We'll see when we've got the completed model. So there is the plague caster. They look like wings on the back, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, this They're E20, like... I couldn't figure out where it went, but it actually sticks onto the backpack. Oh, right. Like that. So yeah, it does look like flies' wings. <laughs> I think it's designed that way. It's it's just pieces of like rag, but it looks like flies' wings. Yeah. There we go. They're all very fly orientated. Well, they will be. No. There we go. So, speaking of being fly orientated, is this the big? Uh, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Oh. I turned it over. Oh. Not quite yet. Oh. We'll see in light of the actual bolt fly thing, but now we're on the Death Guard, Lord of Contagion. So here's right. the real boss. This is just mini bosses. This is the real boss. And he's on a 50 mil base. So oh, we do have one. Mm -hmm. So we'll get the parts off for him. So we have part 26, part 27, which is the, the horned helmet. Part 24, which is part of the leg. Then we have some squished up nerglings, which he's standing on which is part 23, which goes behind the foot. Then we have part 25, which seems to connect onto that. We'll see how. Then we have part 28, which is the cloak. Finally, part 29, which is the axe. So we'll stick them together, and we'll see what it looks like. So there is the Lord of Contagion. I haven't stuck him on his base. I don't think he'll stay on. Plus, I need that bit there to dry. Those three parts. There he is. He looks very cool. He's a big guy. Right, so onto the last thing for the Death Guard. It's a lot of things. It's the Death Guard Fetid Blood Drone. Yay! So let's get the parts off for this. Okay, so the drone, we made from parts C39. C35 there, which is gun. C36, attached to that. And the opposite side, C37 again with the attachment. C38, 
the body is mainly made of these two parts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So C30 and C31, those, those two parts are going to slide together like that. And then that bit is just going to go fit onto there. And then we just have the three like uh, fan things, keeping it up wherever they are. Blades. C34, C33, C32. They just fit onto three sides. It looks really straightforward. Especially for what would be a complex vehicle. Kind of yeah. Thing. So we'll stick that together. If there's any issues, we'll be back in between. Otherwise, I'll just come back with a finished product. This one, I am going to stick to the base because there's no scenic bases currently the size. Was it 60 mil? There's only one, I think it's the hero base with the tank on, but I'm not done on that. So uh, I'll just stick this guy to the base because there's no way blue tax going to keep him on anyway. I might do the same with a lot of contagion because I don't think there's any 50 mil bases. So uh, I'll, have to, I'll check on that before I stick them on, but uh, I don't think there is. So uh, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so there it is the drone. Very easy to stick together, to be fair. I put it on this base. I think one of the sectors there are 65 mil bases in. I don't, I don't mind, though, no, to matter. I shall build this up into a scenic base on its own to match whatever I do with the others. There we go. Looks pretty cool actually. Mm. Quite impressed. And then the back of the box got the uh, cuddly guides on. Death Guard green. Or mine have been Death Guard white. <laughs> so there we go. Oh. So uh, let's look at all the Death Guard together. So there we go, there's all the Death Guard models, there's a lot of them, 20, 31 models, there we go. Cool. They do look very nice actually, I'm quite impressed, they're actually more impressed than I thought would be, again. <laughs> uh, especially with the fly drone, it didn't really strike me as anything spectacular, but it is really nice actually, mm. really easy to put together, yeah. All these models have been really easy to put together, not any problems with any of them, apart from that one snapping. Couple of missing bases. Uh, other than that, great. Mm -hmm. And so we should now move on to the bit most people have been waiting for, probably more than the Death Guard, apart from me. <laughs> Death Guard three and three. Uh, most people are waiting for the Primaris Marine. So let's start putting them together. Okay, so the first of the Primaris Marines. Back to page one in the instruction. Well, actually, page one. That's something I've never seen before. Uh, list of contents, including all the bases you should have. So far, too short on that. Uh, everything else so far, we haven't counted the bases, seems to be there. And then there's a little bit on what the yellow areas mean, what the blue areas mean. So, yeah, didn't know there's that in it. It's helpful for anyone who's just starting out. But anyway, back onto this Space Marine Intercessor Squad A. Squad A. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need F11, F12, F8, and F7. Uh, we also need F10 and F9, which is the bottom. And that makes the first marine, so let's get these parts off. So, here are all the parts. Sorry, everyone saw that. Sorry. <laughs> these two parts just go together. Uh, we have the arm part there, which is just like a block adaption peg. Which is going to go into there, pretty much like that. It will need gluing; it doesn't stain. It's not like a. There we go. That's going to go on there, and there's a little peg for the for the neck. I think most of these go together the same way, do they? That's the same. That's the same. That's the same. Yeah, so we'll cut the, this is this second one goes together almost exactly the same way. So we'll cut those parts off as well, and then we'll show you both the Space Marines finished. Okay, so the first two Primaris Marines I've ever put together. <laughs> there we go. It's a historical event. There you go. They are considerably larger than standard Marines, if you haven't seen them up close yet. 
Uh, I'll get one later on to show you the scale comparison. You know, you've probably seen it on the internet a ton of times by now. But yes, they are obviously larger. The guns are obviously longer. They do look really nice, so I really like the helmets. I like the Mark IV style helmets we've actually got going on there. You know, this is Mark Ten armor. So there we go. Those are the first two. So the rest of this squad, what have we got? We have F5, F6, F3, and F4. We have F1 and F2 there to make up this guy. The difference on this guy is the legs are the same part. I'm just putting the front of the body on. No other differences than that. Then we have this guy who's F24, F25, F20, F19, F21, uh, F23 and F22. And the difference on this is we have a front body and another leg will attach separately as well on this one. But it looks like it goes together pretty easily. Uh, again, I've been drilling holes in the ends of the bottom ones. So I'll be doing that as I go along. Right, so I'll do these two and then we'll look at them and then we'll get on with the sergeant. Okay, so there is the other two Space Marines, intercessors. Went together really easily again. So let's have a look at the sergeant. Move all the gubbins. We have F30, which is the gun on its own. We have F29, which is his other arm, which is free from holding anything. Uh, we have F31, which is the helmet. 32 is the backpack. 28 is the leg on its own. 26, the back of the body and the other leg. And then 27, the front of the body and the shoulder. So again, this looks pretty straightforward. It's going to go on to that, that's going to go on to that. And then we stick the rest together. Back in a moment. So there is the sergeant. So it's pretty cool, you know, just armed with the one weapon. Mm -hmm. It's a nice stand season. Cool. So on to Intercessor Squad B. We have the first two Marines, which are actually identical as far as parts go. We have two B8s, two B7s, uh, two B10s, two B9s, two B12s, and two B11s. Though you can position the head so they're looking slightly differently, which I guess we'll have to do just a bit. And not yeah. exactly the same, Marie. <laughs> uh, also, on this one, there's actually a bit of really bad moulding. You can't see it because I've scraped it off. But running up from the the greave there, all the way up to the top, there's actually a mould line. Oh. But it's like a full mould line. Uh, so you can see the whole curve of where the moulding is. There's actually something that's... But you see, I've taken it off that one as well. But yeah, you just need to scrape them off. A uh, bit of like scraping the normal takes it off. Right, so I'll stick these two together. I'm back in a moment. Okay, so there are the two... Next guys. So again, exactly the same, sort of going together, heads in a slightly different position. These, same again, same sort of parts. We have two lots of B1, two lots of B2, two lots of B3, two lots of B6, two lots of B5, two lots of B4. Um, all the difference is that the, the arms attached to the gun on this one. And there is, again, another mould line on there. You can probably see it on that one because I've not cleaned this up yet. Comes around. The so that's going to need scraping off. Right, so we'll cut these two together and then we'll get on to the sergeant. So here is the sergeant for the second squad. He was pretty cool, like the fact he's got his helmet off actually. Makes him look a bit different. Mm -hmm. Again, he's got one arm free. Having a good point at something in the distance. Over there, quick. Cool, so that's the second intercessor squad. Now we're on to the Hellblaster squad, which again is two sets of two, which are the same, and a, a separate sergeant. Uh, these go together exactly the same way as the previous ones. So much so, I'm not going to spend time, I'm just going to put them all together. No the difference is the weapon they've got, which is the plasma sort of Hellblaster gun. It just goes on the same way as the bolt, the, the bolt rifle 
went on. See, try to learn these new names. Uh, difference here, we've got like two halves of a body. So, the legs separate though. That's the only difference. So I'll stick them all together basically, and then we'll come and do the sergeant. Okay, so, show you a couple of them. Exactly the same, just with a different weapon. So the sergeant now. He's A8, on a different sprue. A13. A12. Which one's that? A11. A10. A10. And A9. A9. Again, yeah, he's got scared in the same manner. So we'll stick him together. That squad's done. I think then we're moving on to... Whatever squad's next. I think it'll be the flying squad, won't it? Okay, so there is the sergeant. With his Sith mask on. Yeah, I noticed that. It's very... Um, cool. Darth Mal Malagus or something. Yeah, I think it is. Someone will correct us in the comments, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Looks very cool. So next, we're on to the Incept Squad. So, what have we got? B30. B30, sorry, B29, which are these boots covered in thrusters and some sort of, like, suspension thing. B28. Just kind of modified helmets. Uh, B27. Uh, B26. B32, 31, and the backpack jump pack thing is made up of B34, a lot of parts, mm. and B33, which is um, a bit of a, and B35 even. Right, so let's clean this guy up and we'll have a look. Um, There's two of these are the same. Two of the same? Yeah. Right, so we'll do them both together then. Uh, Looking at it, it does, it does look like it just goes together. If there's any issues, I'll be back, otherwise I'll just stick the whole thing together along with the other one and then we'll do the sergeant separate. Okay, so there we go. There is one of the interceptors. Cool. Looks pretty good actually. Mm. There's a lot of parts in that one though. And you've got to make sure there's no flash left on it whatsoever, no parts of the sprue, otherwise the legs don't fit on properly or it doesn't fit together very well. Ah. It's the same with all these models, um, but this one particularly, there was a tiny little bit on one of the legs and it, the pipe at the back didn't connect. So make sure you've done that. I've also drilled the bolt holes as well. In addition, here's the other one. I've left the arm off this one. So I'll just show you the connects for the arm. We have this little triangle piece there. And on the other side we have basically what looks like a star. Which means can, you can have the head turn slightly to make them slightly different, but because of the arm, a slightly different position. Oh, that's cool. Only this arm, though, that arm is fixed. And the sergeant's arms are, just all, are both fixed. But this arm you can have in a slightly different position just to make it like he's a different guy. So we'll stick that on. Cool. But let's have a look at the sergeant. So we have uh, the gun there. And the other gun there, where's that? There we go. A28 and A29. Should be there. Uh, the body is uh, A23. And A24. And A24. There's A23. There's A24. Two parts fit together. The legs A27, A26. Again, same as before. Backpack A31, 30. And then we have this little bit, which is 32. And then the head is 25. So we'll stick that bit together as well. And then that should be the squad done. Okay, so here is the sergeant. There you go. Cool. Looks good. It does? Yeah, looks like the others. Mm -hmm. They've been the hardest models to put together. There's a lot of parts, so everything needs cleaning up on them. Of the whole box set, those three have been the most intensive. Mm. Nothing too bad though. No, not for anyone who's done it before, but for anyone who's just starting mm. out, bear in mind you're going to need a lot of cleaning up. Probably going to need a knife, so make sure you're old enough to use a knife if you're watching this. <laughs> you don't want to condone kids using knives. Uh, you're probably going to need a knife, clippers, and one of these little scraping tools, which we use all the time for everything. Mm. Right. 
Oh, well, Claire made a good point about how you end up with sergeants and primaris and lieutenants and commanders. Yeah, I was just asking that if they're new, because um, obviously the primaris marines are all new, um, how do you know who's a sergeant and who's a lieutenant and who's how, a how they managed to, If none of them have fought a battle, how have they managed to get to that? Yeah, and you can tell that they're, they're not as ornate as the space marines, because no, space marines not, have like... They've not fought the battles. Trappings on yeah. kind of thing. They have like bits left over from campaigns or awards have been given. Or yeah, like the, the they've, they've got a build-up of purity stuff. seals somewhere. Yeah. Like, there's a couple of purity seals on these guys, but not too many. I would assume sergeants are picked at boot camp. And then we have these Space Marine Ancients. I wonder, are these the Space Marines that have actually been, were Space Marines, but now have been genetically upgraded? So were they originally, like, some commander in, in the Space Marine Legion? referring to it, the ancient gene seed that they've found and modified? Is we, that... need to, we need to read more of the lore yeah. and find out. But if you guys know, please put it in the comments. Uh, we'd like to know. It's quicker than reading the lore, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you know why they're called Ancients... Are they the original space screens that have been upgraded, or how have they managed to get all this experience and become a lieutenant or a mm. commander? Uh, I wonder if I think they've been upgraded, but that's just my initial hunch. I need to go and oh, read. Oh, like it. you say, boot, boot camp or something. If yeah. indeed they do have I mean, such a thing. At a boot camp, camp, you could you could sort of pick out squad leaders, sergeants. Well, you put them unless, in places, I suppose. Unless you're breeding them to be officers, which is also a possibility. Belisarius could have bred some of them to be officers. I don't know. They'd need a lot of them, though, wouldn't they, really? Well, yeah, they would. And these ancients are like characters, I presume. <clears throat> anyway, moving on from theory of law. Uh, F-36 for the gun. F-38 for the uh, backpack. F-37 for the other... Ah, there's the helmet. And then we have two sides of the body, F-33 and 34. And then we have... F-35. F-35. Uh, are we missing something? No, it's there, isn't it? I wonder where the arm was, it's actually attached to the body. That's quite handy, actually. Uh, right, so we'll stick him together. So there is the ancient with the standard. It's a very cool model, actually. Went together really quick. And it's very cool. Yeah. I like him. Sweet. Right. Moving on to the two lieutenants. We're doing both together. Uh, there's F40, which is the body front, body back with leg is F39, foot F41, those make the main part of the body. Then we have the bolt, auto bolt rifle, okay, which says auto bolt, auto bolt, yeah. auto bolt. that's what it nearly says, <laughs> auto bolt rifle, so this is the one given to them by Optimus Prime, to go with the Primus Marines. Um, then we have uh, the head, which is F44. On the other hand, we have some form of pistol. I'm not sure. What do we think? It's not a bolt pistol, anyway. Oh. Unless it's a modified bolt pistol. And so, that, yeah, there we go. So we're sticking him together. Then we have F47, 46, and the leg is 48. Comes with power sword. A bit more familiar. And probably a bolt pistol actually, but that one's got a. The magazine might just be a bit further in on that one. It needs it needs to reload. Um, so yeah, it probably is like a modified bolt pistol of some format. So that's F forty nine, and then we have F fifty one, which is the helmet, and F fifty two, which is the backpack. So put them together and have a look at those two. Okay, so so put the lieutenants. Is this guy? Cool. Probably my favourite Primaris Marine model. Because of the pose? Because of the classic <laughs> pose. You're posing a little bit. And then the other guy. Also very cool. Helmet off. He's Autobot gun at the ready. <laughs> and then he's Bolt pea shooter in his hand. <laughs> It probably is a proper sized bolt pistol, it just looks tiny in the hands. I wonder if it says in the book where Probably it is. does. I'll have a look. Claire's going to have a look while well, I take you through the next bit. So, the last model for this entire box set, and the last of the Primus Marines, um, is the Space Marine Captain in Gravis armour. So, we have part A16, part A17, A18, A15. That's pretty cool. 
and then we have those parts all attached into A14, which is the cloak, theatrical. Uh, A21, which is a sword. A19, which is like the fist bit there, and the pistol part that goes onto it is A20. And the back part with the ammo feed is A22. So let's stick this guy together. And when I come back, I also have the answer to your question that we didn't ask answer. <laughs> there he is. That's actually a really nice model. The Gravis armor. It's very Ooh, different. It's cool. No, it's nice. It's nicer than I thought. Mm. It was one I didn't really like the look of. It, it is quite bulky. Yeah, I thought it was like going to be the next Terminator armor. It doesn't it? Looks like just a bigger version of Power Armor. So Gravis is just like a, I don't know. It wasn't the Terminator the size of Dreadnoughts in that case. <laughs> but, I don't know, like Artificer armor or something. Like a know. mini Titan. Yeah. Well, this should be Terminator. <laughs> should actually be walking tanks. So hopefully, if they do bring up like new Terminators, there will be walking tanks. But there we go. Let's have a look at all the models together from the Primaris collection. And there we go. Quite a lot of Marines, really. Mm. For a start, so. These guys, not on the bases, because we have uh, these to put them on. These are just like the ones from the Cardinal Overlords. Bit bigger, though, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, wait if you like them. Good. If you don't, you might want to find another routine uh, method of sticking things on flying bases from now on. Like uh, just drilling a piece of quite, th well, not, not a thin brass wire, but sort of medium brass wire maybe into the backpacks. I've or seen the someone do cocktail that. Cocktail sticks. Or cocktail one. sticks, yes, I've seen someone do that as well. It's quite effective. Mm. Just paint them black. Mm. And uh, then just drill a hole and put it into the base as well. That mm -hmm. works. Um, but I suppose we'll try and use these. Yeah, I'll try and use them and see see, yeah. uh, see what happens. Sorry. Who need for that? <laughs> but yeah, so the very nice models. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of the same because it's a starter set. You kind of expect that. Uh, that said, they managed to put some variety in there, which is good. Yeah. We, yeah. You can, you can move the hands and move the heads in a different direction. But then again, they were always going to be the same, weren't they? I mean, these are like bigger yes. space marines, aren't they, really? Um, you, could, you could easily convert them with... Because the heads are the same size as standard space marines. So you could put all those. So you could easily convert space wolves, blood angels. Mm. Uh, if you want some dark angel-specific ones, you could easily convert them on there as well. Uh, symbols. Yeah, you can convert them up. The basic, mm -hmm. the, the sort of blank palettes. Yeah. Which is good, because it's better... If they come like ultramarine symbols carved on them, that would have been a real annoyance. Yeah. Well, that's one thing with the banner. It's it's not got any it's symbols blind. on yeah. at all. It's just got a, a space in the middle to, to put a transfer on. Yeah. Everything else is detailed. I like that. It's a really good approach to that. Yeah, so it allows you to, yeah. to do any chapter you want, even your own chapter if you want to. Yes. Um, I've had a look through the book, the uh, primary space marine book. Yeah. Um, and it's just a bog standard bolt pistol. They are just ball pistols. It's just because it's they're being held by a big guy. It looks tiny. But he might have bought that with him if he's a space marine that's exactly. been upgraded. What, what you were saying, what we were saying before, if they've been an upgraded space marine, that might be his favourite. It might have some meaning to him. His mum might have given it to his him for his birthday. <laughs> space marine's mum. <laughs> is the emperor probably? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be heresy to say otherwise. <laughs> Right, so there we go. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a lot longer than I expected. I expected them to go together a bit quicker than they did. Especially after starting with the Death Guard and doing them so quick. These have taken a bit longer. Yeah, I think uh, um, the way they've been put on the screw has been a bit hard to clip them and stuff like that, I've found. Yeah, um, the, I think the Death Guard, because there's so much variation in there compared to these guys. Mm. Well, so the, if you're going to put these together, put them together in the in the order in the box, put these guys together first. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the, the, these are the worst ones. And even that, they weren't that bad. Not for anyone who's got an experience, but for a noob who's starting out, mm. and these are going to be the most difficult ones to put together. Um, so I'll ask someone experience, go into the shop, ask uh, your local shop mm. where you bought them from basically. Or go online yeah. or watch some more of our videos. It might help. 
<laughs> but if you've got any questions, just ask. Um, other than that, the next video we're going to be doing is the strategic, is it sector and imperialist objectives, which we got today as well. Yeah. So we're going to unbox them and build them as much as we can because there's like clear bits on them that ought to be left separate and then get them ready. And then we're going to play, even though they're unpainted, and these guys aren't even on bases, we're probably going to play a game to get used to the rules using the box set. Yeah. So stay tuned for that in the next couple of days. That won't be today. Uh, the unboxing of the objectives might be today or it might be tomorrow. Um, and then what else have we got? Oh, we've got White Dwarf as well. White Dwarf to look through We, we want to do that, but that might be a bit delayed because we've got a lot on, basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so stay tuned for the next videos we're doing. Uh, we're not going to do one on the main book because the main book we came with is just background. The rules, the core rules, they are just those eight pages we showed you quickly at the beginning of this. We'll go into those um, and the rules for the Space Marines and the, and the Death Guard when we actually play. So we'll be learning at the same time you're watching as well. So plenty of mistakes, as usual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, core rules. That's the core rules. Also repeated in the main book, but the, the other thing that's in the main book other than just law is missions. So again, we'll cover them as we do the missions. Mm -hmm. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe because it helps out loads. And you can also support us on Patreon if you wish. There should be a link somewhere on the screen as I'm talking. Unless I keep talking, then it'll have disappeared or it won't come <laughs> on yet. But I'm going to show up now. But uh, anyway, so you guys take care. And uh, we'll see you again soon. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.